On the Mayfly bench, a custom deluxe reverb build. So today is odds and sods day. I'll be showing you a few little things that we're working on in preparation for final assembly. The first little thing is something I noticed while doing a test fit of the uh, pilot light. This little guy fits in this slot right here and it's powered from, from these two points from the heater supply which is low voltage but it's high current. Problem is when you install that this little edge right here gets quite close to the chassis if it gets a hit sometime in the future, it could actually short itself against the chassis. So what I did is I put some Teflon tape. Let's see if we can change it. Teflon tape on the chassis to insulate it. That should uh, alleviate any potential future problems. The next thing that I did is I installed the ground bus. So I decided to use this uh, piece of heavy gauge copper wire. I believe it's 12 gauge. Uh, instead of the, uh, the plate, because I want a control of where the currents were flowing inside, inside the particular ground. So this end here will be terminated at the input jack, and there'll be another ground bus run from the doghouse over to the power supply, which is going to sit over there. So this guy isn't soldered yet, but uh, eventually all the grounds, the low signal grounds anyway, will be soldered to that. I decided to pre-wire all of the jacks and the controls that are going to be on the face of the amplifier. These jacks and the controls can be tricky to wire if you actually mount the jack in place first and then try to solder all this stuff up. You can see there's two uh, 68K resistors and one meg resistor to ground and that's a traditional fender circuit um, for the input. I decided to use shielded cable for the input for a little bit more hum rejection. Now here's the controls. This is for the uh, normal channel. This is control for the control set for the uh, vibrato channel. I've got the grounds wired up. Again, I'm using shielded cable for the output or the volume pots. And um, also pre-wire the switches. Again, it's a lot easier to do this when it's outside. Because it gets kind of fiddly. Also, I decide to pre-wire the reverb cable, which is right here. The reverb control, I beg your pardon. The dwell control for the reverb, which is right here and my master volume control. See, these can be tricky to wire, especially if you're um, kind of persnickety like I am and like to have all of your shielded cable all tied up nicely. There's a whole lot of shield shielded cable that I used. Um, I think it's a good thing to do um, just to keep noise down in these various circuits. Some of them are very high sensitivity, like for example, the dwell control. Now you could say that that adds uh, excessive capacitance, or some capacitance, to those signals. And I say, in theory that's true, but the cable runs are so short that it hardly makes a difference. In fact, with my capacitance meter, I can actually not read the capacitance of these cables. 